Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Lyric. In this video, I'm going to show you the accessories that come with this machine. To start off with, we have this nice cloth cover, and it has a little slot in the top where you can put your handle right through there like that. Comes off, folds up easily. You can even wash it. It's, it's sealed on the inside so it's not going to fray. It's a really well-made little cover keeps the dust off your machine. Now it's important to keep dust off your machine and off your thread. Uh, it will all work better and you'll get less dust in your machine as you're sewing. It'll be better for your machine. So let's talk about some of the accessories. To start off with, you have this knee lifter and it fits right down there. I'm going to show you how that works. So you can push your knee lifter with your knee and lower the foot or raise the foot like that. And once you let go of it, it just stays lowered. And of course, you've got your uh, presser foot lifter lever in the back. But this is a nice hands-free feature. Another thing that I don't have right out here, but I can tell you about that, you also have an extension table that comes with this machine. You would take off your accessory tray, put your extension table here. Now, also on the bottom of the extension table is a parking spot for your um, knee lifter. So that's a, a nice place to keep it all together and of course the legs on the extension table also fold in so that it can store nice and flat. Okay, then we have the two books. Now this is your instruction reference guide for all three of these machines but including the Lyric and it tells you in here what features come with each of these machines so it's very clear but a lot of the uh, the ways that these machines work is very similar or exactly the same so that's why they decided to have just one book okay and then you also have your quick reference guide which is a really nice place to start when you first get your machine uh, it talks about um, both threading and your accessories and stuff like that also in the back of your quick reference guide are the stitch charts for your lettering so you know what number to type in on your keypad to get the letters that you want to print to type out and to sew out okay then over here we have our accessories now the J foot, which is your all-purpose foot, comes with your machine. It'll be already on your machine, and you also have a bobbin in there. So if your book says you get four bobbins, one of them's already in the machine. You'll get three more in your little accessory bag. And your little accessory bag looks just like this. It's, it holds all your accessories, and um, you can put your accessories, the ones that you use the most, in this little tray and that little tray will be found inside of your um, accessory tray here. The nice thing about this it's all lettered it has the letters for the different uh, feet that go in here and it's got a little clip so once you put that foot in there it'll stay put. It's a nice little uh, feature and then you can put four bobbins right here if you want to. Right here is where you'd put your buttonhole foot and that just fits right down in there. You can put other accessories down below here some on the side here, and then you have a compartment in back for some of the accessories that you may not use quite as often, like some of your screwdrivers and your, your brush and things like that. Okay, so let's go over here. This one is your end foot. Now the end foot is good for doing decorative stitches or for doing like your um, uh, applique where you've got a thick stitch that you're putting in around this edge is a lot of thread you're putting in there. Well this has a little groove on the back which is going to help you sew right, have that flow right through there. And then this one is your vinyl foot or your non-stick foot. It helps it slide like if it's going across vinyl it helps uh, keep that, that sliding. Now if you're sewing on something really um, like uh, patent leather, you may still want to sew over a piece of tissue paper or something and then just tear it away later. But this is going to help a lot with sewing on vinyl. Then we have our edge stitching foot. Now the edge stitching foot is good for if you're sewing on like a zigzag on the edge of your fabric and you don't want it to scrunch up the edge of your fabric, you want it nice and flat like this. But that, it has this little 
a bar right there. And that bar, the zigzag, as it goes past the edge of the foot, it's going to go past that bar, putting a little bit of slack in your thread so that you get um, a nice, flat, smooth edge. You also have a stitch over here, number nine. That's going to be your edge stitching. And that's the one, if you chose number nine, it would call for the G foot. All these feet have lettering. So the G foot right there. OK, I'm going to go back to one. Okay, And then this one is for sewing on zippers. Now, you can sew either side. But when you put this on, make sure that you have your needle off to one side or the other. And you can change needle position using this key up here. Um, it's shaped in such a way so that if you accidentally did lower your needle, it would, would go off to one side, but it might also bend your needle. So make sure that you hand lower your needle just to make sure your needle's in the correct position. And you can put it on either side on the foot holder. It's a foot number I. And it's got these little grooves in the back, and that means that you can sew right next to those zipper teeth, or in the case of putting in piping, you can sew right next to your piping and get a nice, smooth piping. Okay, this one is the older style of zipper foot, and this can be put on your machine. You'd have to take the foot holder off. But this can be moved side to side and get it a real precise stitch. Now, this is really nice for putting in invisible zippers because at the end of, uh, if you know how to put an invisible zipper, you sew the teeth part first and then you sew the rest of the seam below. This is the foot you would use. Now, this is your buttonhole foot. So for buttonholes, you've got a variety of buttonholes that you can make up here. And this is the foot that you would use. And the foot, uh, the uh, instructions are in the manual. And also we have other videos on how to make buttonholes. This is your button sewing foot. Now, if you want to sew on a button, the kind that has the two holes or the four holes, depending on what you have, you'd put your button right in there like that. And then you would choose the button sewing number 90 in your utility stitches, and you can sew on your button this way. It also has a little lever that you can pull that forward, and it gives you a little bit of slack in the thread so that you've got your button sitting a little bit away. It makes it easier to button and unbutton. It's a, a nice little feature that way. Okay, then we have the blind hem foot. Now the blind hem, blind hem looks like this. You can hardly see that at all. It's sewn this way. And there's a special way of sewing your blind hem. Again, we have other videos on how to sew your blind hem. But this is the foot that you would use for blind hem. And then this is the open toe foot. Now, I really like this foot for sewing stitch in the ditch. So I say I'm trying to uh, quilt by sewing right in the well of that seam. This is excellent for that because I can see right where the needle's going. Also, it has this extra little um, channel at the back, kind of like your end foot here. Uh, so it's good for sewing things that you have a little bit of a bump there. Now, this one here is a very precise guide for sewing. Um, so you have decorative stitches that are really close to each other. Or if you have an edge, let's say a hem, that you want to follow one of these lines here, you can get a nice, precise even edge. This also kind of works the same way. Now this is a quilting guide, but it also can be used for decorative stitches to get, and it's a, a little bit more width to than this one here, but this one's good for if I wanted to do parallel lines of stitching. It can be decorative stitching or straight stitching or zigzag, but parallel lines. What that would do, let's put this right back in here. It's a place in the foot holder for that. And let's say I wanted to do a line of stitching and then another line of stitching, I would follow that line of stitching to do my next line of stitching. Now this also fits, and it's, and it's supposed to be hard to move that way because you don't want it to move accidentally by itself. This also fits back here in the walking foot. The walking foot is really nice because what this does is it when the, this fits over the needle bar and when the needle goes up, these feet go down and they reduce 
or eliminate the drag of the foot. That's especially important for if you are sewing something that's lofty like this and it tends to get pushed forward like this with your, um, your regular foot, the walking foot is genius. It helps keep that from happening. And again, with this one, you would have to take off the foot holder and make sure that this is placed around the needle bar, the needle clamp bar right there. Okay, then for free motion quilting, we have the free motion quilting foot. Again, this is one of those things that you, that you take off the foot holder and attach this on. This little part here goes above the needle bar clamp and as the needle lifts up, this lifts up. And as the needle goes down, makes a stitch, it presses down on the fabric and helps the stitch to form correctly. So this one is great for if you want to do free motion quilting like this. I did all this just kind of freehand. Free motion quilting is something that you need to kind of practice on and uh, get better on, but you've got a great opportunity right here. Now for piecing, quilt piecing looks like this. We're putting these things together and you want a, a perfect quarter inch seam. It's important when you're quilting to get your quarter inch seam allowance distance from the seam to the edge of the fabric. This is what you would use. So as you're sewing, you have the edge of your fabric right along this little guide here and then your stitching line will be an even amount. Uh, when you're quilting, you're going to get a nice, flat, beautiful block as long as you maintain that quarter of an inch. And this is the foot you'd use. And then over here we have the needle set that comes with your machine. There's different kinds of needles and I'm not going to get into it here, but your book does talk about the, what needles that you would use for different uh, sewing applications. I will say this, that when you are quilting with a quilting cotton, a woven like this, you want to use a Microtex or Sharps needle. Um, it's a little bit sharper than your universal needle and it will go through the fabric a little bit better. On the other hand, if you're sewing knits, you want to use a ballpoint or if you're using sewing with uh, Lycra or spandex, you want to use a stretch needle, which is like a ballpoint. So you're going to get the best results with the best, with the correct kind of needles and get good needles. Uh, Schmetz or, uh, once you've used this up, um, Schmetz or uh, Class A are good brands. Then we have our twin needle. Now the twin needle would be for sewing twin needle motifs, just like this. And there's a setting on here, and I talked about the settings for uh, putting your uh, machine into twin needle. Now this has two needles in it. I'm not gonna get that one out, I'll just kind of show you what it looks like here. So that's a twin needle. So we would use this little spool guide, put this up here on the bobbin, turn it this way, put one spool here, another spool here, thread it, and then by hand, thread each of those needles. <clears throat> we have just a single bobbin thread. You can see it's a single bobbin thread on this side, but it makes some really nice decorative features. <clears throat> Also notice I've used a stabilizer and that's gonna help keep those nice and flat, those stitches. Okay, now needles do wear out. We just talked about that. Um, and if you wanna buy a new twin needle, make sure you get it the same width as this one. This one says size 211. Two means it's two millimeters from one needle to the other. You don't wanna get a big wide needle like this because your machine is not calibrated for that and even if you have it on twin needle you could end up hitting the uh, needle plate or the foot so make sure that you get one that's size two or two millimeter the 11 means the width of the needle itself the thickness of the needle itself uh, 11 or 12 is is a very common size to use for most sewing okay and then we have the bobbins and i have four bobbins here um, these are baby lock bobbins. They're like the class 15, but they're a little bit different. They're a little bit more rounded here. So if you need to get more bobbins, and I have lots of bobbins at home, if you need to get more bobbins, then make sure you get the baby lock kind of bobbins. 
Here's our seam ripper. Now a lot of you know what the seam ripper is for. The seam ripper is for taking out stitches that you don't want. And it's also good for opening buttonholes. Once you've sewn the buttonhole, you use your seam ripper to open that. Now it, the cover, I like to put that on here because that's not going to roll away. Without the cover, it could roll off the table and I don't want that. Plus it gives you a little more to hang on to when the cover's on there. When you're not using it, make sure you cover that right up. Then we have the um, cleaning brush and we did another video on how to care for your machine. Cleaning brush is important to keep the lint out of your machine. Over here we have a variety of screwdrivers. This one here has wings on it to kind of help you get a little more torque. Um, all of these screwdrivers are wider than your standard screwdrivers. They're made to fit the baby lock screws that are in your machine. This one here is an L-shaped screwdriver. It gives you a little more torque, but you can also use this end if you want to. This one is for fitting into uh, tight, close spaces. Okay, now in the center here, we have different spool caps. One of the spool caps um, is smaller than the others, and I don't happen to have it, but uh, oftentimes it's already on the machine. And that's going to be for your smaller spools. I'll show you what that looks like. So you want to match your spool cap. The idea of the spool cap is to keep your spool from sliding off of the spool, the horizontal spool pin as you're sewing. So you want to use your smaller spool cap for smaller diameter spools. For your larger diameter spools, see that one's not quite, this is medium size. So I would use this bigger one like that. And um, that makes sure that if there's, like some of your spools will have a, like a little slit there to keep the thread in. The spool cap is gonna help, the right size will help keep that thread from getting caught in that um, little slit there. Okay, now what's this one for? Okay, so this one is for the kind of spools that don't have it like an end cap already built in. So you'd put that on there and this is going to help keep your spool from sliding off the spool pin. Okay, and then we've got this spool net. Now this is for the specialty type of threads that tend to be a little bit springy and they kind of tend to uh, roll off the spool just sitting there. So you'd put this around here. Think like a, a person who likes to knit. Sometimes they'll put a, a net around the ball of yarn to kind of keep everything nice and orderly and keep it from getting tangled. Same idea. That's what that's for. Then we have a couple things here. This is an extra cover for your bobbin. It doesn't have lines on it, but you have this one here. And this is a really nice uh, tool to have. This is a hole punch. It's a little bit sharp on the end, not terribly sharp, but enough so that if you're doing a keyhole buttonhole or an eyelet, you can punch this. Just make sure you have a block of wood or something under there. Don't just do it directly on your table or else it'll scar the table. This little hole here is the clean out. So when you are punching something, a little bit of that material is coming off and ending up in the end of the tool. Eventually it'll work its way out right there so it has somewhere for it to go. That's what that's for. Okay, so that's the accessories on your Baby Lock Lyric. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it's been helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you could leave those in the area down below. So I hope you have fun sewing. We've got lots of other videos you can watch. So see you later. Bye.